So this video is going to be about what's inside of a Honeywell zone valve. So this is a normally closed Honeywell zone valve. So I know it's a normally closed zone valve because it has this little lever and I have to manually open the valve and then push it up to lock it in that position and now it's in the manually open position. So once I release this, it'll go back to the normally closed position. The cover on these zone valves, um, they usually have a little uh, screw here to hold them on. Um, you'll have to take a flathead screwdriver um, or a Torx, a Torx bit. So this here is a Torx bit. I don't know if you can see that. It's kind of like a star shape. So you can just slide it in right here. Um, it's a lot easier so it doesn't slip. You can take a look inside. Now, this is a used zone valve that I've kept just for demo purposes. So this particular zone valve has four wires. Um, two wires go to the motor and the other two wires go to this little end switch here. Um, the end switch uh, is used when the zone valve powers all the way open. It has a little, little button underneath here. And once it, once it powers all the way to the open position, it makes a little contact. This verifies that the zone valve is calling and it's open, ready for something else to happen. So now I'll go ahead and pull off the power head. Um, what you're gonna have is screw here and then one over here on the other side here, if you can see that. So what I use in this case is um, this long flathead screwdriver um, because it can go straight up and down here. So let's see. You're just gonna loosen this and then you can kind of tell when it's all the way out. I can kind of feel and you can maybe hear it. Okay, it has a little, a little popping kind of noise once the screw is all the way out. You hear that? Okay. So now I could pull it off, but the easiest way is to release some of the tension on the, on the zone valve. So I just slide it over like that, and then I can just pull it off like this. So as you can see, um, that little ball inside, the motor turns this little um, stem and then it rotates this little ball in. So let me go ahead and see if I can pull this top of the motor off so you can see that real quick. This is not recommended to do on any of your zone valves. Normally, um, you just replace the whole power head. You can get these little motors here, but usually by the time the motor fails, um, you have other problems in the linkage or inside the valve body. And I'll explain a little bit more about that here in a second. So for now, let me go ahead and just pop off this little motor cap uh, and show you what's inside of that. Okay, so I got it loose. Um, so I'm gonna pull this off. Okay, this is just a little protective cap on the motor. This here's the internal part of the motor. You can see that little motor there spins back and forth. The motor spins really fast and the actual drive of it is really slow with a little more torque. I'll go ahead and pull this whole motor off real fast and show you what's underneath it. Okay, so I just loosened up this little screw right there. There we go, got it. Okay, so this is the actual motor and you can see on the bottom it has a little bit of grease underneath here to keep it lubricated. Okay, so you see that little gear right there. So let me pull out this little end switch and show you what that looks like. Okay, so there's a couple little clips in here. Let me just pull it out of there real quick. All right, so here we go. This is the little end switch. So here's a little button. So now let's take a look inside of the body of the valve. Okay, so the 11 in one screwdriver. We'll take these little screws out here. They're like 5 16 screws. Okay of flow and if you look on the inlet you see how um, it's much smaller hole there uh, you can get a couple different zone valve variations that have uh, high flow capacity but this one here has um, a smaller restricted hole and then you can look in the outlet and then you can look and see the little ball in there so now what I'm going to do is pull this lid off sometimes they get stuck there is a little gasket in here the little ball that seals it up it's made of rubber and then inside of the zone valve here around the top here you see that little o-ring 
gasket. Um, if your zone valve is ever leaking, you can get new um, gaskets for here. Um, matter of fact, I think I have one sitting over here. I'll tell you the, the part number and stuff. So actually, um, what I'll do is I'll link this gasket down below if you ever have uh, signs of residue leaking around your zone valve. All you have to do is pull the power head off of the zone valve and then remove this little cover and then you can change this little gasket out. It doesn't take much. Um, but I would recommend that when you go to change this gasket that you take a wire brush and just clean it off and then wipe it off real good so that way the new o-ring will seal up nice and tight. If I rotate this little valve stem you can see the little you can see the little plunger move back and forth. So, so it's very important that this valve is free and easy to rotate. Um, what ends up happening is that these zone valves start to get seized up and then the motor is not strong enough to actually rotate it. So it never opens up fully and the end switch never makes. So it doesn't actually tell the boiler to run. So that's pretty much it. Uh, now let me go ahead and put the valve body back together. First thing you, you're gonna wanna do is put the little gasket in. It goes right around that little groove here. You wanna make sure that that sits all the way into the groove. Um, if you try to put this, if you try to put the top of the zone valve together and it's not sitting perfectly inside of this groove, it's actually gonna cut the gasket and it's gonna leak. So get that nice and tight in that groove. And then I wanna show you something that's very important here. So you notice that this zone valve body has these two little dimples on one side and on the other side it has one dimple. Now if you put this backwards, okay, you put the two dimples on the left side, it will go back together, okay? It will mount, but the problem is is that the power head won't line up correctly, okay? It'll be, it'll be 180 degrees backwards, so you'll have to pull it all back apart and fix that. So it's better to just look for these two little dimples now and get them lined up at the beginning, okay? That's just a, a quick tip. Um, now, push this together, kind of wiggle it, and then it'll all fall into place. So you'll notice you have two different size screws here on the lid, and um, they're opposite of each other. So what you're gonna wanna do is line up the, the big screws first um, don't ever put all, don't ever put one screw in and tighten it up. Um, go ahead and start them all by hand. That way, um, you can actually get these screws in because if you tighten it up and it's off centered, the little, the little lip right here will not, uh, allow you to tighten this up. You get all of them hand tight, then you can use your wrench, um, or your nut driver, whatever you're using. Okay, so I got that. Now what I do is just use the 5 16 on my 11 and one screwdriver. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna mount the power head right on top. So you wanna make sure that this valve is in the closed position because this is the normally closed zone valve. That way the stem and the power head are almost lined up. So once you put this together, what I do is I get it as close as possible and then I take the manual lever and I open it. And as I open it, it should fall and seat in place. You may have to do it a couple of times, but then once you get it to seat in, you just keep pressure down uh, and hold it. That way it stays in. And you'll notice that the other, remember you had two screws that did not have threads? That's actually used to align the power head to the valve. So you can see that little dimple there. That's the top of the small screw and it's on both sides here. And the other side has the screw that uh, we're gonna screw in that actually holds it in place. Okay, so let me go ahead and tighten that up. Okay, then just drive it manually. You can hear that? It should work nice and smooth. It shouldn't have any popping noises. Otherwise, something in the alignment is off. So then once you have that, 
um, where you would slide the power head cover on just like that and there's two little grooves on both sides and you just push it down so i hope you enjoyed the video uh, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe